this and it's 5 10 in the morning and normally i'm not up this early for me um i usually um deal with a lot of pain long it's been a long time of pain uh, since 2005 and uh, due to a an a, a situation happened at work and then uh, after that there was a I just falling uh, just recently I fell and hurt injured my hip and had an MRI last week and don't know yet what's going on with it but uh, to walk on it it's painful I said it may be uh, torn and not sure exactly what's gonna happen uh, this this fall um, was in August trip and fall I guess you want to call it but um, I had an MRI last week and I've never had problems with uh, going in an MRI or having a fear of tunnels or any of that stuff. I I was able to go, to, I just went to sleep normally uh, during them. And um, the first dinner I had at uh, the beginning of March, um, I couldn't do it. It was, the pain was so intense that, um, this class was bugging me. It was so intense that um, I just couldn't do it and um laying down on the table for two minutes and the pain just shot up and down my legs back everywhere i was just going crazy and they thought it was sciatic at first so they gave me an injection on that made it worse <laughs> but not the doctor's fault he was following doctors other doctors he was following what i was saying and because the pain just was just there all the time anyway um, I woke up, this, I was about four o'clock this morning, I was shooken by a, a dream that I had, and it was, um, very intense. Uh, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ, he's my savior, he's my personal savior, he's my friend. He's been there with me, with me the whole time of my life, and, um. Uh, since, uh, ever since I was born, before I was born even. <laughs> I do believe in that. I do believe that he was there even before I was born. And I knew exactly how my life was going to be and what my purpose was. And through all this, I've been searching my purpose and trying to see where I uh, fit into this world. At 66 years old, still, I'm still trying to find a purpose. Well, I had a dream that um, <laughs> and, uh, that I was standing in a field of wheat, and um, there was a you know they were harvesting wheat, and you know they had the rail the well I don't know if you do or not no or not but they have the rolling bales where they turn into big old round ball um, rolls, and um, I was sitting there in the field and all I was telling I was talking to Jesus he was there and I, I guess it was Jesus it was yeah, it seemed like he was him that was him he looked familiar um and um all of a sudden I was he was stacking I was laying on my side and he was stacking these wheats of bare wheats of hay or oh, excuse me it wasn't even his barrels of hay at this point it was they were square and I was going, what is, what's happening? What's happening? And he, he just said, I love you. And I just kept piling these things up, hay on top of me. And then all of a sudden I felt like I, my head was sticking out of him going, oh, this reminds me of a book that I read. And all of a sudden I started feeling suffocated. <laughs> um, it was about um, Christians who, who were, normal everyday Christians think they live their life you know and they, they oh, I go to church and I do this and I do that and blah 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 you know I I I I I well we're not doing any of it and I, I know that 
you know, I know that we don't do it. He sends us to do it, to do his business. Um, and it's not for everybody because not everybody's ready for it or they're not willing to hear it. And But he, these, the Christians that were in this, I saw it, this pit with their heads popped out of their out of the ground. They were just in the ground with their head stuck in the ground and and it was in that part of hell. Uh, and uh, they were in there and they were under, couldn't understand why they were in there. Why am I in here? And he said, because you didn't do what I asked you to do. I, I dis out of disobedience basically and I said Lord I, I mean what am I how am I supposed to is that me am I in there and then all of a sudden I woke up and because I started feeling suffocated and so um, I my heart just started getting heavy because I knew that I knew that because I was in this much I was in pain that I couldn't do what I felt that he wanted me to do and he, I mean he he was the one that sent me to Bible college he, I wouldn't have been able to pay for that on my own he he provided he provided everything I needed I'm not I'm not trying to boast or anything because I'm I don't know I mean but it, Bible college is just training and just getting to know the Bible more and what they teach you and, and what you can dig through to find for yourself. It's a part of um, just training and not every, Paul didn't have Bible training, Paul. We, Paul was, was Saul who killed Christians because of it, because of their belief. But so he God can teach anybody. We don't really need college. Sometimes it's just to build our confidence or to understand what what we're learning, uh, what Christianity's foundation is, and all that. But um, my mm, uh, one of my biggest fears was, what if I said the wrong thing? What if I, I'm accountable for every word I say? Every word I say, and the ums and and yet the every word I say and especially to baby Christians baby Christians are or those that are trying to find God trying to to see him, find him for themselves we're accountable for everything we say and do and my life is just like I've been stuck in this bed or or um, unable to to do anything except well YouTube is here <laughs> I gotta tell you that there's I do have good days as far as walking and doing things go but it's it was it was shocking to me because I, Lord am I gonna be am I gonna I don't want to be one of those people I've never wanted to be I and the older you are the more you know the more you're accountable for and I've been following Christ since I was four or five years old. <laughs> so, I have a lot of accountability. I felt that he's called me into the ministry. I'm here in bed. <laughs> and, uh, and, but I'm talking to you. And know that somebody's out there in this early in the morning. I don't know. Somebody may be out there. Or see this. And, but I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He loves you so much. How many people, how many of your friends would actually die for you? How many people would go through the torment he went through to die for you? And to know that you existed. How many of these so-called gods would die for you? How many of them would, most of the gods that I've studied or research, learned anything about only care about themselves they don't care about you the people that are on that are that are that, that have sold their souls for fame or fortune he doesn't care about you he may give you a false sense of love he may tell you that he does 
but only God, our holy creator, the only living, truly living God who died for us is the one that loves you. And well, he's the one that said, he'll give you the way of escape when you're in danger. He'll protect you when you're, when you're hurting. If you're in pain, I've been through hell and back in my life and I know this, I've lived it. I know that he'll be there for you. In the quiet times, he'll be there for you. You can be, oh, oh, I used to sleep with my Bible at night because, and then my Bible, my Bible's over there, but I have two other ones that are tear stained because of it. Because of the times that I've had to live from the age of four all the way up and, and, the, and the pain that I've lived through. And no soul is, is, no soul, no person is, is worthless. And no matter who or what has, has uh, affected my life or tried to tear it down or um, injured it my spirit, anything, any of it. It's worthless unless, unless I go through it with Jesus. It's worthless. It doesn't mean anything. You can die and live and do all that, but, or live and die or whatever you, however you want to say it. I'm not, it's early, but my heart is heavy because I woke up and I thought, Lord, what have I done for you? What have I done for you? Not for me, not for, not for anything else, but what have I done for you? We're here for him. We're not here for ourselves and what we can get out of life. He loves us. This world is not our world. We are not. When we're born as Christians, we no longer belong to this world. We belong to a heavenly realm. And yeah, he can bless us and keep us safe and, and bless us with things just to, you know, just to, because he loves us, because that's what dads do and that's what parents do, because he loves us. But this, is, this world is nothing. The things that you own today, that you might as well hold out your hand and just let them trickle through your fingers like dust because that's all it is. Yeah, I, I've, I've lived poor. I've lived where I've had $20 in my pocket and it's got to last a month. <laughs> Not easy. You paid your bills and everything. And God always supplied it. He's always supplied it. No matter what. He, there's so many things in my life that he's done and I'm going to start recording them because of the testimonies that, he, that he's given me. He's, I'm a living testimony and I know that I know he loves me and I know he loves you. I have, an, an, I don't have a normal family. My family is broken. But, if, but love is, love is the conqueror. Jesus is the conqueror. I've seen it. My, I grew up going to church on my own. I screwed up a lot of times on my own, trying to find out who he was, trying to find out what love was, trying to find out I didn't know what love was. But he was always there. He always loved me through everything. I just want you to know today that he loves you. And no matter what you're going through, whether you're in your body and you can't even move to scratch your nose, whether you're there and you're just listening to my voice because you can't see, or no matter what the situation is in your life, that he loves you. And whether I know you or not, <laughs> I love you too. Because God loves, brings that love inside. He brings it inside. 
and there may be people that are trying to suck your energy or whatever they call it, energy vampires, <laughs> whatever. Um, God can give you the strength and the wisdom to know how to deal with that person. I had a person at work who constantly tried to belittle or disprove what I was saying or limit my, um, or tell me I was a liar basically by doing stuff and by um, not checking her work or whatever, anyway, the person. And Jesus said to, he told me, I want you to get her something. I want you to do something special. And so um, I did, I got, I made her. I'm not trying to boast, this isn't about me. It's about her and about what God did in, the, in it. Um, she was a known witch. She was a practicing witch. And she was trying to, to destroy me <laughs> because I was a Christian. And um, I'm not just a Christian, I'm a believer. I'm a believer and I'm a disciple of Christ. I'm a, I'm a servant of Christ. And um, Jesus, actually, she, Yahshua. And um, he, I said, get her something. So. I did. I found a. They were making these little jar, clear vases, and you could put a beta fish in there, and then give them a, a, a. You can put a peace lily on top of it, take all the dirt and stuff off, and put a peace lily in it, and it'll live, because peace lilies like water. They love living in water, and um, so I did that, and she was shocked. She was her whole personality changed. It was like, wow, somebody actually does care in this place. She was alone. She was a loner. Uh, she didn't have anybody. I don't think she really had any relationships with anybody or knew of any real ones. Just that little act of kindness. Not saying, not saying that that's what you need to do. Sometimes you have to push them away. Sometimes you have to say, I love you, but I need to let you go. It's, it, you meet you, you know, Sometimes I love you, but I need to let you go. Jesus loves you. I want you to know that. But I need to let you go. Because it's harming. It's it's doing, just it's being destructive with you. But then I look at the people in, that have died over persecution. Or, or um, hatred of other people. And... Um, that isn't of God. You can eat people and say, oh, it's out of the name of whoever. You know, I'm not saying any religion, belief, or whatever, but it's out of the, you know, living, trying to um, use them for the, using their God for an excuse to eliminate people. That isn't how you eliminate people. You actually draw them to him, not destroy them. And there's times when I have, I have um, injured people because of my actions. And, and I'm sorry. I, I've, I've tried telling them that I'm sorry. I'm human, I, that's no excuse. Being human is an excuse. Being weak is an excuse. Being in pain is a, isn't an excuse. Yeah. Life, life. Being human is is a tough road to live. And um, and all I can say is I'm sorry and and move forward and sorry that I. I'm a Gabby, so it's hard for me to shut my mouth. Um, I try to be, that's part of being an intercessor, um, prof, and I'm not, I don't claim to be anything like that. I just, I just know that Jesus uses me and I, um, to, to reach other people at times, and I'm praying that this reaches the right people. 
I don't, I'm alive. I'm live and I don't have anybody there, but it's been 20 minutes, but it's okay. It's, it's there for a purpose. And I pray that if you're there and, and you're feeling alone and you're feeling broken, he <laughs> said his little song called Jesus is the super glue that mends a broken heart <laughs> I used to sing that a long time ago uh, Jesus gave it to me and it went like Jesus is the super glue that mends a broken heart Jesus is the super glue, Jesus is the super glue that mends a broken heart He's the truth, the light, the way. He is the master of my life. Jesus is the super glue that mends a broken heart. I used to sing that. And, and uh, God gave me that song a long time ago. And sang it to the kids in Sunday school. Um, yeah, he's... He's, I've been a lot of places and done a lot of things and know his faith, know his, know his truth and know his, I know him. I know him. He knows me. I pray to God he knows me. <laughs> I cry him enough. <laughs> but um, I pray that, that um, you'll get to know him too in your own special way, in your own personal way. And know that it's him and not a fake. Not a, not a phony, not, not um, somebody that's trying to be a god or making their name great, but somebody that's authentic and pure and has comes from a pure heart. And um, it's 22 minutes. I'm going to be doing a <laughs> text. I'm not even in Texas and I'm doing Texas goodbye. <laughs> Long. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm going to go for now and I'll, I'll be back. And I pray that your day will be blessed. Today's uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, May 25th. Um, and may God bless you. I don't know how to end this. <laughs>